What's up everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we're gonna be installing the P3 OBD2 boost gauge and show why the factory gauge shows 40 pounds of boost. All right, so here we have our gauge and all of our stuff that we're gonna need to install. This is the part that replaces the vent and has the actual display readout and the buttons on it. This is our little controller box right here. That's gonna go behind the dash. We have some wiring. We're gonna be plugging this into the OBD2 port underneath the dash. And then if we decide to install the boost tap to get an actual boost reading, not just what the CAN bus says, we're gonna need to have this plugged in as well. Then if you want, you can wire in the dimmer and actually two other sensors of your choosing. I think for now we're gonna leave these out. I'm gonna probably just set this on the dimmest setting and leave it there anyway. For our boost tap, if you go that route, this piece installs right where the intake air temperature sensor is. So we're gonna take the intake air temperature sensor, which is right on top of the intake manifold out. We are going to install this. There is a little nipple here that installs like that. We'll put some thread tape on it. Run our hose. Now the worst part of this job is probably gonna be routing this hosing through the firewall or through the bulkhead. Now, as far as tools go, all we're gonna need is a couple of trim removal tools. These came from P3, so these are the ones you can get from them. You guys know me, I like the VW ones, of course. However, I've lost like 100,000 of these, and all the ones that I've ever had to buy, uh, I've never lost any. So whatever you got, use that. Once we get all this installed, we'll see what this gauge reads versus what the gauge in the MFI reads. All right, so of course we're working on the driver's side. This is where our gauge assembly is actually gonna go. Let's remove this side panel first. That should come off pretty easily. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the cover off of our vent right here. Now there is technically a special tool to remove this, which is a long thin piece of metal with a hook on the end of it. We're gonna try and do it a little bit differently. There's one of two ways. If you have the special tool, you're gonna actually go through the vent, similar to this with the vent all the way open, grab the vent, unhook it, and then pull it all the way out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get back behind the vent this way, and we're gonna try and pry it out that way. Here's our trim piece that we do need to remove. This we have to separate anyway, so it's fine that we did it. Just a couple of tabs that hold this in. To remove the vent itself, there are four tabs, two at the bottom and two at the top. I also like to stick my hand back here and apply just a little bit of pressure forward in order to aid in removing it. That's why we put a little pressure. Just had to pop one clip and this whole piece comes out. We're gonna be replacing this. I would still probably save it in case you ever want to go back to your factory setup. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove our little tray right here. That All you have to do is squeeze this together, tilt it down, and then slide it out. See there's uh, locking tabs here and here. Once we have our door off, time to install our gauge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire and just put it right through here. This way we don't have to worry about it getting in the way of the airstream. We'll just kind of tuck that through. Now I'm not gonna snap the gauge all the way in just yet. I'm gonna just kind of let it chill here. I wanna make sure it works before we get it all installed. Here is our control box. We're gonna go ahead and plug that in. I'm gonna set this on top of the dash for now. We will be putting all this behind here, but I wanna get everything set and make sure it works. Then we'll come back and we'll properly secure it, make sure we don't create any rattles. Now you'll notice we have some wires that are gonna to need to go back behind the dash. Looks like if we take our wiring right up through, right next to our OBD port, we can run it all the way up. Be careful of your little boost pressure sensor here. Plug this in just like that. Hook the wires up so we don't see them. Then we'll pull our harness up through here where our tray was. We can just leave this hanging here for now. Here is our wiring harness. We'll actually tuck it through this way. We'll get our control box here. We'll just go ahead and plug this in. We don't need to worry about our analog or our dimmer yet, and we don't need to really worry about this yet either. We just wanna make sure it works. So for now, I'm just gonna set all that right there. Let's see if our gauge comes on. All right, so we got our gauge plugged in. Let's go ahead and we'll turn the ignition on first but you actually are gonna need to start the car in order for the gauge to work properly. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. There we go, she works. Just page through a couple of these menus here. Ooh, throttle. 
Now all this is doing is pulling signal out of the ECM. So whatever the ECM sees is what we're seeing here. Before we install everything back together, let's go ahead and take it on a drive and see what we get. All right, so our gauge works, that's super cool. What we're gonna do next is go ahead and tuck everything back into a safe spot. We're gonna start by actually pulling our gauge back out because what we wanna do is we wanna put our trim ring back on. Go ahead and snap that into place. So this is what our gauge is going to look like with the trim on it, looks pretty fresh. Then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and tuck it back in. guide it gently. Once we have it set in place, just go ahead and lock it in. It should click in and there we go, we're good. There is plenty of room to tuck these wires back in here. You do need to pay attention to where the tray comes in. You don't wanna put it in with the tray open and then end up smashing the box once the tray is closed. In order to prevent rattles, I'm actually gonna wrap this little brain box in foam. This is just some foam I actually had left over from testing foam for the Mark III blendors. This will just help prevent the box from rattling around. You can tape it on, zip tie it on, whatever you wanna do. We're just gonna tape this on. There, now we don't have to worry about this guy rattling around. And I think we can actually just take it, kinda of tuck it back here. That's nice and out of the way. Our wires are nice and out of the way. If we do this right with the wires, we actually have plenty of wires. So we can go ahead and zip tie this little section together and just tuck it. Again, you just wanna be careful it's not impeding the little door here. Now there are a couple of extra wires we have here on the connector. This is the one for the actual mechanical boost gauge. We also have our dimmer wire right here. If you wanna hook it directly up to the dimmer on the car, it is not a variable dimmer. It's either bright or dim. I'm gonna set mine to dim all the time. That's how I prefer it. And then these two five volt analog things, you can actually add other stuff. I was talking to the P3 guys, they said guys will do anything from like tank temperature for their air ride. If your car doesn't have a wideband O2, this one does, but if it doesn't, you can add that in. Basically anything that runs off five volt signal, you can hook it up and have access to it in your gauge. For us, we're just gonna go ahead and tuck these away, get our wiring together, and we'll just go ahead and zip tie them up. Nip the end of that. And we can just tuck this right back here. Now, we need to pay attention. You can see the door right there. There we go, not impeding the door. Straighten this cable out a little bit more and tuck it back behind. Put our trim panel back on. Now, if you are only installing the OBD part of the gauge, you're done, that's it. All right, we got our gauge all in, our trim's all on. It looks super fresh. This is our battery voltage that we're looking at here. Let's look at something a little more interesting. How about throttle? A couple of things we want to look at. We also, in addition to looking at how cool this gauge is, what about airflow out of the vent? That would be a concern I think I would have too. Let's turn the AC all the way up and open the vent. It's definitely a different airflow. Obviously, you're only feeling it come out of the bottom. You will lose a little bit of adjustability with the vent, mostly up and down. I didn't find this to be that big of a deal, but it is something you wanna be aware of. I also wanted to look at the brightness at night. There is two settings, a dim and a bright. And you can set this a couple of different ways. If you guys get one of these, you really gotta look through the owner's book. There's a lot of things that can do. Personally, I'm gonna put it and leave it all the way dim all the time. And despite how it looks right here, the readout at night is actually more clear. It looks a little fuzzy in the video just because of the lack of overall light. It does look better than this though. There's tons of different configurations we can do. Oh, look, we can get DTCs too. All kinds of cool stuff you can do. Air fuel, of course, because we have the wideband O2. Zero to 60 time. Hmm. That could be fun to test. All right, here we go. All right, so we did zero to 60 in 4.09 seconds. I'm okay with that. This is cool, because now uh, as we do different modifications to the car, we can actually look at at least something on our vehicle. After playing around with the gauge a little bit, I found a setting that I really like where we can look at our vacuum reading as well as our boost pressure. Now, let's take a look at why that factory gauge in the performance monitors read up to 40 PSI under full load and at idle has a positive pressure of about four and a half to five PSI. Let's start off with the sensors. We actually have two sensors we can look at. 
we have our charge air pressure sensor and we have our intake manifold pressure sensor. Charge air pressure is in the boost piping and our manifold pressure sensor is right here in the intake manifold. The sensor that's drawing the reading for the gauge, both the P3 and the performance monitor gauge, is the intake manifold pressure sensor. At idle, it shows a reading of about 0 0.35, 0 0.34 bar. That reading in bar, 0.344 say, translates to right at five PSI, which means what our MAP sensor is showing corresponds exactly to what our gauge is showing. But how can that be? It's important to understand how this information is presented to us. There's kind of two things we're looking at. We're looking at PSI, pounds per square inch absolute, and we're looking at PSI or pounds per square inch gauge. When we look at the performance monitor gauge in the center of the car, we're looking at an absolute pressure reading, which means that the atmospheric pressure at sea level anyway, which is roughly 14.7 PSI, is added to the reading. That's why we see 40 PSI on the gauge that came in the car, and we're only seeing 24, 25 or so PSI on the P3 gauge. The factory gauge is adding that atmospheric pressure on top of it. When we look at the P3 gauge, we're actually looking at PSI gauge reading, which means that 14.7 atmospheric pressure is removed. So really all this is is a different way to calculate the display and show a different reading the numbers are essentially the same. So under max boost, say, if we just took 14.5, 14.7, whatever atmospheric pressure is at the time away, we would have actually a fairly accurate boost reading. Now, to me, that's pretty straightforward. Here's where it's gonna get interesting. Why are we showing five PSI at idle? So let's take our five PSI idle reading. Let's subtract 14.7 to remove that atmospheric pressure that exists anyway, we get a reading of negative 9.7 PSI. Now, typically when we look at something like a vacuum gauge, we're not dealing with positive pressure, we're dealing with negative pressure. We don't usually look at that in terms of PSI or pounds per square inch. We look at it in inches of mercury, which is a vacuum reading. So negative 9.7 PSI equals roughly 19.7 inches of mercury, which is what our P3 gauge shows. So even at idle on the factory gauge, the performance monitor, if we remove 14.7 PSI or roughly atmospheric pressure and then convert that PSI to inches of mercury, we get a vacuum gauge reading that we're actually much more accustomed to looking at, something that would really be similar if we were looking at it on say a mechanical gauge. Now this can get a little bit confusing, it makes perfect sense under max boost. You pull atmospheric pressure off of that reading, subtract 14.7 say, and you get roughly how much boost the car is making. It's that idle reading that I think throws people for a loop. Why does my car say I'm making five PSI boost? When I'm sitting here at idle, I should be in a vacuum condition. So what that boils down to is if you're going to use the performance monitors and you want actual readings, removing the atmospheric pressure that the, this gauge includes, you gotta do a little bit of math to interpret it. The information's not wrong, it's just a really weird and, to be honest, kinda dumb way for this to be displayed. But now that you understand it, it makes a little bit more sense. Also, big ups to Ian from Reflect Tuning for letting me bounce this off of him to make sure that I had everything correct for you guys, because this can get kind of confusing. I also wanna make sure I mention that the factory gauges are typically a calculation. They're not always 100% accurate. Taking our coolant gauge, for example, there's a range on that gauge in the cluster where the needle won't move, but the temperature is still changing. And that's done to simplify the display so that the average driver isn't freaking out because that needle is moving a little bit, say, when the cooling fans come on. Handful of things as I wrap up this video. One, you are plugged into the OBD port. I talked to P3 about this because I was concerned about parasitic current draw. They said you'll probably draw about 25 milliamps, which is well below the normal spec, and that's not a constant 25 milliamps either. I will tell you though, if you're gonna park your car for a couple of weeks with this gauge installed, me personally, I would unplug it from the OBD port just to make sure that you're not gonna have any issues with the car not starting. It probably won't be an issue, that's just one extra layer of security. If you're planning on using the boost tap, to hook up the engine vacuum and boost to directly to the gauge, a couple of things you wanna be aware of. You're removing the pressure and intake temp sensor out of the manifold, putting it in aluminum block, and then putting that back in the manifold. 
you might actually see higher intake temperature readings than you would if the pressure and temperature sensor was still left in the manifold. Talk to P3 about that too. They said they have a bunch of guys running these gauges with that setup on the track and they're not having any kind of issues. So you might see a degree or two higher. However, it should not impact the car as far as drivability or check engine lights. I'm going to wait on hooking that up because I want to use our gauge to do some intake temp sensor readings when we do our cold or cool air intake on the car. Also, if you're installing that, that vacuum connection is going to come through the bulkhead or the firewall, so you want to find a good clean grommet to install that. Now, there is an alternative to eliminate that heat soak or the higher intake temperature sensor reading potential anyway, and that's putting a boost tap on the end of the intake manifold right here on this little fitting, which is just kind of a dead fitting. If you do that though, you are going to have to put a hole down in there. And so, you know, you could consider that technically ruining the intake manifold or at least putting a hole in it that may or may not be repairable. The way we have this gauge set up now, there should be no implications with warranty whatsoever. We've just plugged something into the OBD port, unless you broke the thing when you were taking the vent out. All we did was plug something into the OBD port. So there should not be any warranty issues at all. If we put a hole in our intake manifold, that may be an issue down the road, so that's something to think of as well. Something else I also look at anytime I install something on the car that I need to look at while I'm driving is ease of visibility. What that means is, am I blocking it at any point in anything I'm doing driving? So typically I'm driving, hands on the wheel, looking straight ahead, you know, nine and three is where my hands are, I can see the gauge perfectly fine. If I roll my hands up to 10 and two, which not technically where they're supposed to be, I actually block the gauge display with my left hand. So if you're a 10 and two driver, that may be something to consider. Now, if you're in a performance situation, you're not 10 and two, you're at nine and three, but there's a lot of people that drive 10 and two, you will actually block, I'm looking at it now, pretty much the entire display piece of that gauge. This is also not the kind of gauge, like any gauge in your car, that you should be staring at while you're driving. You want your eyes on the road, looking around, being aware, not focused on a little gauge. So all in all, pretty cool gauge, super easy to install, gives you a ton of information right here at your fingertips on the display, and that's pretty cool. I know a lot of you guys prefer the old style analog where it's just a needle. I get it, I prefer it too, but this car doesn't have anything else that is just a needle, it's all digital, so I think it fits the interior of the car really, really well. Big ups to the guys at P3, who I met at Wookiees in the Woods last year for hooking up the gauge so I can do this video for you guys. As always, I will put links to everything we talked about and used down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.